Well, good morning, everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead on porch time today. You guys, we're not on the porch. We're out at the smokehouse. We are smoking bacon today. That is one of the things that we do here at Deep South Homestead. This is my third time this year to smoke bacon. I'm totally excited about it because I love doing this type stuff. It is something that our forefathers done uh, on a yearly basis. It's a way they survived. And guys, with everything that's going on in the world today, you need to know these skills. Now today is a perfectly beautiful day to start with. There's no wind blowing. It's nice and cool out here this morning. I'm sitting next to the fire, so I'm able to stay a little bit warmer while I'm sitting here. My hands are cold, but hey, that's all right. Now, we're not cold smoking today because it's just not cold enough to do that. It's only around 42 degrees out here this morning, and that's perfectly fine for smoking bacon, but we're going to hot smoke it today. We're going to run the internal temperature in it up to around 135 to 150, somewhere in that area, depending on how long it takes me to get to that point because I have things I have to do today, and I'm kind of going to be pushing it a little bit today. So, you know, I come out here this morning, I got my ash bucket here, I cleaned it out from last time, and I put the ashes in here. Guys, ashes is a vital mineral for the garden. I will take these as soon as I get this going good and I can get a break away from it while I'm letting it sit here and smoke. And I'll take these and go put them in the garden. I do this all winter long with the fireplace in the cabin, with the fireplace over at the house, and things like this. I take and put my fireplace ashes in the garden. And I do soil tests about every two years. Some things I do every year, it just depends on what I suspect. But guys, Things like this is natural ways to build our soil back up. If you've got heavy clay soil, you might want to try putting some fireplace ashes. Now, don't use pine. You don't want any rosinous wood. You want to make sure it's all oak or hardwood, beech, you know, anything like that. Birch, all these type trees are really good for that. Um, any of your hardwoods. Don't use any of your firs or pines or anything like that because it's really not good for the soil. It has very little nutritional value to it. So, <clears throat> I'm using apple wood here today. Now, I only use wood from my place. I don't go to the store and buy wood chips and apple chips and all that kind of stuff because it comes from orchards that's been heavy, heavily sprayed with chemicals for years. As they take these old trees out, they don't want to just lose money, so they... They send them to these companies and they chip them up to send out for smoking wood and people don't even know they're smoking their wood with all these harmful chemicals into their food and stuff like this because it gets into the tree and it's there. So I'm predominantly, when I trim my apple trees back or my pear trees or something like that, I use the wood from them to do this with. Now today, porch time really is not a, it's not a, I'm gonna talk about it, it's not all about food shortages. Now, food shortages play, is going to play a huge factor in whether or not you survive or not. Now, you just got to, I mean, that's just common sense. But it's not all about food shortages. It's about things like this right here, knowing how to salt down bacon, knowing how to cure bacon, knowing how to cure any meat, whether it's jerky, beef jerky, any of this kind of stuff, whether it's knowing how to do this and then turning around and knowing how to smoke it and all to preserve it. This is, these are lost arts, guys. This is something that's probably gonna, y'all are gonna ask me today, how long is this gonna take? It is seven o'clock when I got started. Hopefully by 12 o'clock I'm finished because I have appointments after that that I have to be to and meetings and stuff like this. I've got to, I've, I've got to be able to drive to and get there and get back. So I'm hoping by five, about 12 o'clock, I'm gonna have this to around one, I'm hoping around 145 to 150. Now, the bacon I'm smoking today is really big, thick, heavy bacon. This pig we killed was around 400 pounds. Mr. Barrett and his son come did it for me and uh, took it out to Mr. Al's freezer and hung it. Um, for like We hung it for three days, and then you know we went out 
and we actually processed it. We have videos of that. We this one that lost a lot of the footage on that old computer. Uh, it wasn't actually an old computer, it's a new computer, but she's lost a lot of the footage from that, so we're having to try to work around, see if we can recapture it somehow or other. Because it was really good footage of us processing this animal and showing community and teamwork and all this kind of stuff. Because it's not all about food shortages. It's about doing this kind of stuff, smoking your own meat, curing your own meat, no matter what kind of meat it is, whether it's goat, sheep, chicken, pig, hog, I mean, whatever, you know, cow. Guys, it's, it's learning how to preserve stuff, learning how to take what you have on your own place and being able to survive at it. Now, you know, if you live in a city, I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's all about all these skills. That's what everything is about, is skills. And if you don't know these skills, and you live inside cities and, you know, suburban type areas where you can't do these type things, now we're under a red flag warning, but you know what? Danny's gonna smoke his bacon. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna let my bacon ruin because they say I can't build a fire. That's a contained fire but I'm still going to do it. Now, this, this particular smokehouse here, a lot of you are probably going to ask some questions about it. We have videos on the construction of it back in our uh, video log. You can go back and check it out. And uh, make sure, you know, if, if you like to want something like what we've got, it's in the step-by-step -step instructions. I got to keep the fire going just right. Now, I hadn't checked my temperature gauge around there. I'm gonna hoping I can get it up there around. I, will, I like to run mine around 200 to 220 degrees constant because when you first hang your bacon in there, you want to dry it first. You want to heat it up as fast as you can and just dry it without smoke. And that's what I do. I run the temperature up for like an hour and I dry it really good because smoke doesn't adhere to wet meat very well. Now we've let this hang and dry after we took it out of the refrigerator and washed it and cleaned it. We let it air dry for a while so we could get some of the moisture off of the surface. And now it's just a sit and wait game. You know, I mean, I'm, I got things I can do right here at the barn. I can do right here at the garden or the little Remington solar greenhouse. I can run back here and take care of some things. But I've got to be right here close where I can monitor this because you don't want your temperature fluctuating up and down a whole lot. Now, the beauty of this morning is I'm sitting here watching the sun is trying to come up over the horizon yet. It hadn't quite made it over the trees behind me. I'm watching the wildlife in the background here. Um, it's amazing. I see the squirrels playing in the trees. The blue jays are off over yonder. You know. The cows just went past here. That's the reason I waited till they all got past before I turned the video on because they were making so much noise. And they'll probably be back pretty shortly because I have them shut off from the front field and they can go in the woods. They're dexters. They love to eat leaves off of trees, brambles, weeds. They're really not really great cows for big luscious grass pasture. They love, they're more like a goat. They like to be in the woods and just scrounge around and they stay perfectly fat and healthy doing that. As a matter of fact, you have less parasite problems with animals that are that way. These are things that we need to know in order to survive. Which animals work best on the homesteads? You know, Wanda and I, we don't run a zoo, okay? Lots of people's got so many animals on their homestead that to me, it's like a zoo. You go out there and you look and you got, you got just animals are running everywhere of all breeds and types and everything. And, and to me, you know, if that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. Me, every dime has to make a dollar is the way. That's the reason I've been financially successful my whole life. Every dime must make a dollar. If I start putting money out on something and I'm not seeing a massive benefit from it, it's got to go. You know, uh, a lot of people ask us, <clears throat> how do y'all do everything? How do you keep the wild animals from just destroying everything? Well, I have a rule on my property. My four corners that's fenced in, if it comes in here and it doesn't benefit me in some way, it has to go. Whether it's through uh, being shot, whether it's through being captured and taken somewhere else, or dispatched and put in the freezer, whatever. If you're not part of my system, you can't be here. You know, I mean, that's just it. 
Uh, like yesterday, I had to take out a bunch of squirrels yesterday just simply because they were hanging around my fruit trees and my fruit trees are loaded with peaches and stuff like that. And they're notorious for stealing them every one. So rather than them take what I have, I had to go in and eradicate quite a few of them. Now, not all of them because not all of them are up around the peach trees. A lot of them staying out in the woods. Once it's out in the woods, it stay around the oak trees and like them over in yonder going up in the oak trees, eating acorns that still fell on the ground, still finding them and stuff like that. I have no problem with them. They're out in the wild. They can stay out there. But like rabbits that come into my field, they all get shot. I, I just eradicate all of them. You know, I mean, I know that sounds horrible, but in order for me to survive, that's what's got to happen. You know, my neighbors don't really take care of anything like that. So um, I'm the only one right here where I'm at that really does what I do. Now I have other neighbors that plant gardens and do a few things like that, but not to the level that we do. And, and I'm happy for them that they do that because that's what is going to keep them sustainable. And that's what you want. You want to be in a community of people that are like-minded and do some of these things. Now, like we mentioned in the live stream the other night, the property right next door to me right here just sold. I have no clue about who these people are. I don't know what kind of people they are. I'm just hoping and praying that when they get here that they're like-minded people, you know. Um, that's, that's our desire is that the Lord would give us like-minded people. If not, it'll be a learning curve for them. That's all I can say. Uh, but guys, it's, you know, we're trying to survive and do the best we can. And when you're doing that, it's not all about food supply. Now, Food supply is a big part of it. Let's don't let's not rule it out. It is a huge part of it. But it's not all of it. And when we hear food shortages, we hear famines, we hear all this stuff, we start panicking because oh my gosh, we have no food to eat. <laughs> that should not happen. Because if you're raising your own food, food shortages really shouldn't affect you. I mean, it should, you should go, wow, I sure hate that for those that live in cities and stuff like that. But if you're a self-sustaining person like we are living out here in the country and, and you have a rural area and you hear about food shortages, it doesn't bother me because I don't buy my food from town. I'm not putting that garbage into my system if I can help it. I don't go to restaurants. One and I do not do that. Uh, we've had lots of people invite us. We always turn them down, usually. Um, you know, we just, we don't go to movies. We don't do that kind of stuff. We don't sit and watch TV. We're actively about surviving. Because, I mean, in our health is, I mean, I'll just be honest with you. Our health is beginning to break down. I mean, I'm losing eyesight in one of my eyes. And, uh, you know, I've got the knee now that's all messed up. I can't bend it beyond a certain point. I can't kneel down anymore. I mean, there's things that, you know, is happening to me. Ms. Wanda's got some physical issues going on with her. And as Wanda and I age, every moment we spend doing something, it must be constructive. It can't be just lollygagging around because lollygagging around is what's going to cost you in the end. Now, there is a situation that we're fixing to face. I can't tell you exactly how long it's going to be, uh, but it's going to happen. We've got, an, we've got a, a, another, how what's the word, plandemic <laughs> coming that uh, is way worse than the last one was. I got a lot of information on it this past week. It irritates me to, to no end because it's man-made. It's uh, man's tampering with stuff he's got no business tampering with, splicing into stuff he's got no business splicing into, and creating horrible things all in the name of control and power and all this kind of stuff, guys. And it just irritates me that we just can't live and... We just can't enjoy life, 
You know, I mean, why does everybody out there, the the elite, why do they all have to have power and control? I mean, why? I realize that there's governments, and I realize that there's dictatorships, and I realize there's all this stuff is in the world. But I'll be honest with you. I am looking forward to the day when I'm with the Lord, and this is over. There's no more tyranny. There's no more sorrow. There's no more crying. I mean, there's no more any of this stuff. You know, I mean, it's just one of them things that I just look forward to it, you know? I don't look forward to dying, if that's what many of you are going to say. It's not the fact of dying. I don't look forward to that. Nobody does. I'm not scared, but nobody looks forward to dying. We all want to live. That's human nature. But knowing my destiny sure does make it a whole lot easier. You know, I mean, the Lord gives us all these things in Matthew 24, Luke, what is it, Luke 21, and, and you know, he gives us all these things about the, when the disciples ask him, said, Lord, when is the end? When is this? And he gives them a whole list of things. We've done videos on this. We've talked about this. And I like the part where he says, let not your hearts be troubled. These things must come to pass. And when I hear those kind of things, and then I think about Isaiah when he says, I have a plan for you. You know, in Isaiah he talks about, I have a plan for you, and I, and I have good things for you planned out. That gives me encouragement to know that the Lord has it. And then when I go over to Psalm 91, and he talks about how he has us under his wings. He's protecting us. He has us, he, he gives his angels charge over us, lest at any moment we dash our foot against a stone. They're there to deliver us up. You know, God himself is not down here doing this. He has his angels out doing all the work for him. And, and I'm sitting here like, you know, the life I've lived, I was like, Lord, how many angels did it take to just stay up with me and make sure I didn't get hurt in some kind of crazy way? Because I've been, I've been broke all to pieces. I live so rough. And, and I, I lived on the edge. I was always looking for the, you know, for the next adventure and you know and got hurt many times doing things that i signed on to do i probably you know because I, I, I felt like i was 10 foot tall and bulletproof and but i came out the other side god was with me i'm probably pretty sure he looked back and just shakes his head at me lots of times when i do things but somebody had to do it you know and nobody would step up and i ended up being the one that you know stepped up to do the job and but that's that's life and so don't panic when it comes to all the when it when they start talking about all the food shortages because guys it's not just about food shortage it's about this right here knowing how to how to prepare how to cure your stuff how to take wild edibles out of the woods Understanding permaculture, because hey, if you don't have permaculture, you probably won't survive anyway. And and then it depends on. You know, there's so many variables out there. Uh, one of the sources I was talking to this past week, as we talked, um, he made a comment to me, and he said, "Danny, everything." that the prepping community has prepared for is great. But what's coming is something they didn't prepare for. And it's going to take them by surprise. And it's going to wipe out a lot of the prepared community. I wasn't happy about that, you know, but... Wanda and I sat down and we really did some really <laughs> serious thinking and trying to cover every base. But you know, it's impossible to cover every base because evil and wickedness exceeds the righteous's mind. 
Because we don't think that way. Those that are born again children of God, we don't think evil. Evil goes beyond the limitations of even morality in every kind of way. And when you think about it, when we hear things happen and we go, oh my word, that is so evil. It never crossed our minds until we heard it. Now the sun's starting to come in the background here and the camera's going to start looking a little funky for a little while, so don't let that bother you. Plus, there's smoke on the horizon here from the smokehouse. But evil exceeds anything that we can think of. That's why it is so hard for us to prepare for everything because if we're not evil, we don't think that way. I love the smoke, don't you? I mean, just look at all the smoke around. It just, I don't know, it's calm, still morning, the smoke hanging in the air. It just, it just does something to me. It, it just brings a sense of peace to me. It does away with all the evil that we're talking about here. And guys, you know, I don't know. Not everybody's going to be able to survive what's coming. And I get that. And I might be one of them that don't. I don't know. I've done the best I can. I've put my faith in the Lord. The Lord promises me in Scripture that He will not withhold anything from me that is good or that He wants me to know. He's not going to just let something happen to me and say, Oh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. That's not the way He works with His children. He lets his children know things in advance. And if you're close to the Lord, where you should be at, he will make it known to you. It's not my job to tell you all about the stuff in the world. It's your job, just like it's my job, to get with the Spirit and to get with the Lord and let the Spirit tell you stuff, show you store, stuff, open doors for you, you know, I always said, <clears throat> when, the door, when the Lord closes one door, He opens another one. And when I see something close in my life, I don't panic about it. If something comes to an end, whether it's a friendship or whether it's anything, I usually will look at one and I'll say, well, that has run its course. That chapter in my life or your life is closed. It's time for us to open a new one and move forward. I don't let it bother me. Um, and I don't get bogged down in it. Family issues, all this kind of stuff, that's not my problem. I don't, you know, I, I don't get involved in all that stuff. If, if family wants to have problems, that's their problem. I just move on, you know. Just leave me alone, move on. You know, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. If you don't want anything to do with me, that's fine. I have no problems with that. Let's just live our life and be peaceful. You know, and that's the way everybody should be, I think. Instead of people that just cannot leave something alone. Because that type of stress is what breaks us down. And with everything that's uh, going on in the world, that's the kind of stuff that's going to mess up everything. That's the kind of stuff that's going to break down your health. When things start happening and things start going south, that's when you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, i got to get this fire going here, guys. I've been sitting here chit-chatting and making sure, i got to make sure it keeps going. But that type of stuff brings on a type of stress that really wears on the body. And, and it's not good because if you're in a crisis situation, which like we're going to be in here pretty soon, uh, you don't need that type of stress in your life. So you're going to have to learn to let it go because it really, we sit back and think it's all about food shortages and it, and it plays a big part, but it, it's not really all about food shortages. It's about, like I said, this, smoking, curing, learning how to survive, permaculture, cutting down on stress because stress makes you eat and eating is the last thing you're going to want to be doing 
when food is running short. You're going to be wanting to learn how to ration it out. Rationing has already started. Most of you know that have small children, uh, babies, they're starting to ration some of the baby formula out. People have started really panicking about that because they're like, what am I going to feed my baby? Well, if you breastfed, that might correct that problem, you know? Some women can't. I realize that. I was, I, my mother couldn't. She wanted to, but she couldn't. And not, maybe it's not, I don't understand the science behind it, but hey, I'm a male. It's not intended for me to understand it. I just accept and move on. And guys, expect more rationing in the future. Things are going to get tougher. Things are going to get harder. Uh, stock up on your fertilizers. Anything that you need for gardens. Um, be careful if you use cow manure, goat manure, sheep manure, anything that's been eating hay that possibly been been sprayed with graze on. Be cautious of that. Because them herbicides pass right through them animals and right into your garden. And right when you need a garden, it will destroy your garden. And it will destroy your land for years. And you don't have that. You will not survive. So be very cautious. Chicken manure, rabbit manure, things like that is good for gardens. Uh, chicken manure needs to be composted first because it's hot. Rabbit manure can be put straight on the plants. Rule of thumb, any creature that... Uh, his manure is in pellet form, can be put straight on the garden. If it's not in pellet form, it has to be composted. Um, so that's just that's just a rule of thumb. And human manure and pig manure, you probably want to compost those down really, really, really good and only put them on fruit orchards. Don't put them in a vegetable garden. I mean, there's just, guys, there's rules out there with everything. I don't have time to explain all the different rules. But if you do your own research, as quickly as you can. Get you a Jadam, that's J-A-D-A-M books. Uh, it's, it's a Korean method of farming. Very cheap way of farming with maximum results. You know, American organic farming is being blown out of the water and blown out of proportion. It's all about money. Uh, it's a good way to do things, but it's all about money. So be cautious of that. I do believe in organic farming. That's what the Jadam book is. The Jadam book is all about organic farming, but it's organic farming the natural way. So you want to get involved in that if you can. Guys, hope I know today ain't been no big, you know, whoop de doo on porch time because I'm sitting here smoking bacon, just trying to do my porch time while I'm smoking this bacon here. Trying to make sure I get everything done on a schedule, using my time wisely. Because that's what the scripture tells us to do, to redeem our time wisely. Don't just sit around like a couch potato watching TV and eating tater chips and Cheetos and stuff like that. Use your time wisely because you're never going to get it back. The time that I've been sitting here talking to you is that much closer to the grave that I am. And I don't feel like I've wasted my time. I feel like my time is beneficial. There's lots of people out there that need to know certain things. So I don't feel like I'm wasting my time doing this. Now, be careful is all I'm going to tell you. There's some things coming here real quick. Be careful. Be careful about what you do, how you do it. Uh, guys, expect some things with the currency in the future. Uh, there's going to be some issues with that. Just do the best you can where you're at. Grow where you're planted. That's what I tell people when they ask me things. I say, grow where you're planted. Do the best you can. Think outside the box. People who invent things and come up with creations and ideas and stuff like this are people who think outside the box. Um, like they say, necessity is a mother of all inventions. And guys, that's the way it is here at Deep South Homestead. I may not have something that I need, but I've got some videos coming up here shortly about some things that Mr. Al showed me and I'm going to build because they are so ingenious 
but yet so simple that anybody could do it. And they're really a great time saver. And they're just, I don't know how to say it. I don't know why I didn't think of them. But I will give credit where it's due. Mr. Al will come up with these things. I'm going to be doing some videos here shortly. Just as soon as I get caught up a little bit and I'm able to build them. I have, I have them started. I have one of them already built that I want to be showing you. I'm working on the other one, but I have to, I got so many things doing, I have to run back and forth between them. But I'm hoping to be able to show you guys some things in the future that's going to make life homesteading so much simpler. And for you to be able to look at it and go, wow, man, is that a time saver, you know? So anyway, guys, thank you for being here with me today. I got to finish smoking this bacon. And hopefully, at some point, I might be able to show you what it even looks like when we take it out of the smokehouse. And then when we slice it. I might even throw some of those clips in at some point. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Ooh. It's hot.